Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're tackling something really key if you're a PPL holder aiming for that EOSA basic instrument rating. We're zeroing in on those essential IFR instruments, not just textbook stuff, but how you actually use them in, say, a Cessna when the clouds roll in. Real world focus, you know? Exactly. The goal here isn't just definitions. It's about understanding how each instrument uh, really becomes your guide up there, how it helps you stay oriented and know where you are when you're flying purely by instruments. It's about building real confidence for IFR. Couldn't agree more. So where should we start? Maybe the most fundamental one, the attitude indicator, the AI. It looks simple, shows pitch and bank, but why is it so, so critical for IFR? Well, the AI is basically your anchor in IMC instrument meteorological conditions. When you lose the natural horizon, your inner ear can play tricks on you, right? Spatial disorientation. The AI is the only thing that gives you the direct, unvarnished truth about your aircraft's attitude. It's gyroscopically stable. So, in the cockpit, when things get soupy, your eyes need to trust this, not what your body thinks it feels. It keeps you the right way up. Ah, okay. So it directly fights that disorientation. That makes sense. Right, so once the AI helps us stay stable, the next big IFR challenge is navigation, knowing where we are and where we're headed. And for that, the horizontal situation indicator, or HSI, seems like a big step up. What's the magic there? The HSI is just brilliant for uh, simplifying things. Okay. It's genius is combining your heading with the VOR or localizer needle all on one display. You also get the toe from indication right there. So instead of looking at your heading bug, then your VOR display, then figuring out the relationship. It's all in one picture. Exactly. It cuts down your instrument scan time massively. Fewer mental gymnastics, less chance of error. You instantly see how you're tracking relative to your desired course. Huge help, especially on an approach. That integrated view sounds like a lifesaver. Okay, now, you mentioned VORs, VHF omnidirectional range. Even with advanced GPS, these ground stations are still a big part of the European IFR system, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. VORs are still real workhorses over here. They send out signals, basically 360 invisible lines or radials from the station. Your receiver tells you which radial you're on, giving you your bearing from the station or allowing you to track to it. While GPS GNSS is often primary, VORs define many conventional airways and are, critically, a fantastic backup system. You definitely need to know how to use them for the VIR. Right. Essential backup and procedural knowledge. Got it. And sticking with ground-based aids for a second, what about the older pair? ADF and NDBs, automatic direction finder and non-directional beacons? They feel a bit dated. Are they still relevant? They are less common now, definitely being phased out. But you, uh, you do still find NDB approaches, especially in some smaller airfields, and they are on the syllabus. The ADF needle simply points towards the NDB station. It gives you a relative bearing, the angle between your aircraft's nose and the beacon. The tricky part is the mental math. You have to combine that relative bearing with your heading to figure out your actual magnetic bearing to the station. Mm -hmm. It's about old school flying, requires concentration. Okay, so less intuitive than VOR or GPS. Needs more active interpretation. Good to know. Let's jump to the modern core then. GPS, or more broadly, GNSS, satellite navigation. It's really changed the game, hasn't it? Completely. GPS GNSS provides incredibly accurate position information uh, pretty much anywhere. It's fundamental for en route navigation, flying direct routes, and for executing very precise arrival and approach procedures. In most modern GA cockpits doing IFR, it's usually the primary navigation source now. And in Europe, we often hear about IGNOS in conjunction with GPS. How does that fit in? What does it add? All right, IGNOS. That's the European Geostationary Navigation Overlay Service. Think of it as a booster for standard GPS. It transmits correction signals and, crucially, integrity information about the GPS constellation via geostationary satellites. This makes the GPS position significantly more accurate and reliable. And that reliability is key. It's what enables LPV approaches localizer performance with vertical guidance. LPV, so that gives you vertical guidance like an ILS. Precisely, it allows you to fly a stable ILS-like approach path down to lower minimums, but using only GPS augmented by IGNOS. No need for expensive ILS ground equipment at the airport. This is huge for GA, opening up thousands of regional airports across Europe to precision-like approaches, even in poor weather. Really vital technology for IFR accessibility. Wow, okay, so IGNOS really unlocks capability. So bringing it all together then, the AI for attitude, HSI for integrative awareness, VOR, and maybe ADF and DB for conventional routes and backup, and then GPS GNSS boosted by IGNOSIS for primary navigation and precision approaches. It's like a whole suite of tools working together. That's exactly it. They form the foundation. Understanding how each one works, its strengths, its limitations, that builds your overall situational awareness. It gives you 
redundancy. If one system has an issue, you know how to use the others. It's all about safe, confident flying, especially when you're a single pilot IFR. It's more than just test knowledge. It's your survival toolkit. Well said. So for everyone listening and working towards their BIR, here's something to think about. It's not just about knowing what the AI, HSI, VOR, or GPS does in isolation. How will you consciously practice integrating the information from all these instruments together? How will you build that mental picture so you can make safe decisions, especially when things don't go as planned up there? Mm -hmm. Think about that synergy.